Welcome to Better Daily Life, where we are moving forward one percent better every single day. Download the app and supercharge your journey at BetterDaily.life. Now it's time to get back and get back with your host and my dad, Alex Van Houten. What is up, Betterment family? This is Alex Van Houten in Better Daily Live. Happy Tuesday. It is Nutrition Tip Tuesday, and today we're going to go through your Betterment journey from a nutrition perspective. And today we're talking about honesty. I know, I know. It sounds like a word Thursday, but it's not because this is very, very specific to the world of nutrition. Now, every single client that I've ever worked with who needed help from a nutrition perspective, I always start in the same place. So they'll say, I want to lose 10 pounds, or I want to improve my health, I want to get off of some medications, I want to sleep better, I want to have more energy, I need to deal with my love handles, or whatever, right? So they're like, can you help me? Is there a meal plan I need to be doing? What diets do you espouse? That sort of thing. And, and so there's always this list of things people want to know questions they have. And my first activity for them, the first thing that needs to happen in order for us to make progress from a nutrition perspective is they have to keep a food journal. They have to define reality. They have to start keeping track of what's actually happening in a day, partially for their benefit, but also for my benefit. Because Well, a number of reasons. I'll explain that in a second. But this is extremely important because all of my coaching practice, there might be other coaches who do it a different way. But for me, all of my nutrition coaching practice starts with honesty, honesty with yourself, honesty with your coach and honesty in your ability to make changes. A nutrition journal tells me a lot of different things. It tells me what you're eating for breakfast. It tells me how often you're eating certain foods. It tells me in about what quantities you're eating. It tells me about when you wake up and when you struggle and how often you're snacking and all kinds of crazy stuff. It tells me what quantities of food you're generally eating in the mornings versus the evenings. It tells me whether or not you're getting enough protein. It tells me what your greatest sources of fats are. It tells me whether or not you're getting most of your carbohydrates from simple sources rather than complex sources. There's so many things a nutrition journal tells me. But the number one thing that a nutrition journal tells me is whether or not you are being honest with yourself and whether or not you're being honest with me. It's really interesting when I ask people to keep a food journal, one of two things happens. Either one, they keep a very, very detailed account of everything, and it's a powerful learning experience for them. They say, wow, I didn't realize this, or I didn't know that this, or I discovered that they either learn something from that process because they were so detailed about it, or the other thing that happens is that it's very not detailed, So there's a little thing here and a little thing there and a little thing there. So it's not very descriptive at all. And what will happen is in the recap or recount, the person will tell me all kinds of reasons why journaling is hard. And then they will say something like, well, I didn't write this down, but I had this. And, oh, I didn't write this down, but I had this. And, oh, I forgot to write this down. I didn't have this. And what's really interesting about that is the first scenario is everything that food journaling can be. When you take the conscious spotlight of your mind and you shine it on something important to you, the ability to change increases. You learn something. I promise you learn something. I I have been a trainer for 16 years. I have studied nutrition science. I'm a certified nutritionist from the International Institute for Integrative Nutrition. I understand nutrition, but I still learn something about me in my stage of life right now every single time that I return to food journaling. That's why I do it in the Faithful 40 Challenge with you guys, that I keep a food journal for 40 days. And I I look at that and I see what I can change and improve for myself in this stage of life, in this phase of training, and with my fun digestive tract and, and all the challenges that come with being a young father with a business and cost of food going up and all kinds of fun stuff. Like There's a number of challenges that come right down to the wire 
that I can take account of when I do a food journal. And so I, I still do that because food journaling teaches me things about myself. And I still recommend my clients who work with me to revisit a food journal regularly. If, if I'm training somebody and I've been training them for a long time, they don't keep a food journal every single day for the rest of their life or for the rest of our training duration. But there are times when it's like, okay, keep a food journal for this period of time. Let's assess where we're at and what needs to change. And then we can move forward and do that. So that's scenario one. People learn a lot when they're very honest with themselves, when they take an honest account, when they define reality. Scenario two is an unfortunate scenario because I can't learn anything about your nutrition habits from your food journal, but I can learn something about your level of honesty with yourself. And it's not a pretty lesson. The lesson is you're eating food every single day. But you don't know what you're eating, you don't know why you're eating it, and you're not willing to admit those things to yourself. It's an important lesson, but it's a hard lesson because if you want to make changes in your exercise and nutrition, if you want to improve yourself, if you want to be 1% better every single day, one thing that you definitely, definitely have to do is you have to be able to define reality. You have to be able to shine a spotlight on what is happening right now and what is happening right now and what you're doing right now and how you're behaving right now and in the many different ways that you might be shooting yourself in the foot on this whole betterment journey. That's a hard thing. That is a hard thing to accept. It's a hard thing to realize. A lot of people are going through their day, their life even, with all kinds of stuff happening to find reality. This is an important concept. A couple weeks ago, I published a show of a conversation or a talk that I did at an organization called MD5. And this is, it's a powerful discipleship program for men. And it's a year long and men meet in groups and they go through faith and, and fitness and finances and family. And the whole process starts with assessments to define reality, where men have to get really real about what's the situation with your friends? What's the situation with your family? What's the situation with your fitness? Like, what is reality right now? Turn your face toward reality and look at it. <laughs> and define it and be honest about it. And that's what food journaling does for your nutrition. But you have to be honest have to be honest. You have to be willing to look at what your habits and behaviors are right now. And for some of you, you're like, why are we wasting a short cast episode on this, Alex? Like, duh, it's not hard to define reality. And for you, I applaud you and I'm proud of you. I'm so glad that you have faced what is happening right in front of you right now. Good job, at least with regard to your nutrition. But I want you to know that there are other people, and this might be you, I might be talking to you right now, there are other people that do not want to see what they're doing right now. They do not. They know deep down somewhere inside, maybe not articulated, but they know it's not good for them. They know that they're eating in a way that is hurting their stomach and is, is making their body mad at them, is accumulating fat, is making them feel like garbage and low energy. They know it. They know on a regular basis that they're doing this to themselves, and yet, and yet they don't want to know it. And they definitely don't want anybody else to know it. And so, food journaling is a hard practice for them. It is a lesson in honesty. It's a lesson in being honest and defining reality about where you're at, nutritionally speaking. And the reason I'm harping on this is because we've got the Faithful 40 Challenge in front of us, and I'm, I'm very excited about it. It's 40 days of mindset, nutrition, and exercise, accountability as a group. And we go hard together and, and we, we chase after something difficult and we try to establish new habits and we cash in on the energy of the group to do so. And that's good. It's very good. I'm very excited about it. But one of those components, that nutrition component, that journaling component, uh, people blow over that. They go, oh, okay, I'm journaling my food for 40 days. No, you're not. You are being very realistic in defining reality every day for 40 days. And when you do that, something changes. Even if you've made nutrition changes in the past, even if you've altered things and you've seen positive progress and stuff, I don't care who you are, you don't eat perfect. And nutrition journaling is an amazing way to be honest about that and to learn from being honest about that. 
And if you're a person who struggles with journaling, maybe you're like, yeah, yeah, well, maybe I won't journal. Maybe I'll just, you know, give myself a B minus on the nutrition front and maybe I'll just count my protein. Maybe I'll count my sugar. Look, I want the Faithful 40 Challenge to be accessible to you. So if you're not ready to journal every single day for whatever reason, fine, we'll accept the 1% that you're willing to give. But I do want to challenge you. I do want to challenge you to be honest with yourself and honest with your betterment family. I want you to be honest. You have to define reality. You have to accept what's actually happening right now before you can make any meaningful changes whatsoever. I have a client I've worked with for a while, and I had the privilege at one point of working with her and her husband at the same time. And she would send me her food journals. I'm like, oh, okay, these look pretty good. And and then we would be in a session and she would tell me about like, oh, okay, that didn't make it to my journal. And oh, I had this too and it didn't make it to my journal. And she was really upset because she was improving in some ways, but she wasn't seeing her scale move. And uh, I spoke to her husband about it. We talked through, I said, I, I know she's going through, you know, this and that right now. I want to know how I can best support you guys at home. And he goes, he goes, is she telling you about this? About what? No, that wasn't in our food journal. Oh, okay. Well, it should be in our food journal. Uh, like I live with her <laughs> and and she's doing that. I'm like, oh, okay. That's interesting. And I started finding out all these things that wasn't making it to her food journal either because she was embarrassed about it. Maybe she forgot. She has a very busy schedule. So I asked her about it. I said, hey, so your your husband tells me that X, Y, Z, you should have made it to your food journal and, and it wasn't there. I couldn't help but notice it wasn't there. So so what's up? This whole journaling thing only works if we're honest. And she kind of broke down. She goes, I know that there are things that I need to change. I'm just having a really hard time knowing how to change them. I go, that's fine. Let's start by being honest. And, well, my commitment to you as a coach is you're not going to hear from me like, what is wrong with you? Why are you eating this garbage? I can't believe you drank that. There's not going to be a lot of judgment on my front. But what there is going to be is, hey, this is where we're at. And what I know about how your body is going to respond to these things is this. What can we do to make this better? And that's not scary. That's not judgmental. That's just defining reality and bringing the 1% better approach to it every single day. Here's reality. Is there any way we can make this better? Cool. Let's do that tomorrow. Let's do that next week. Let's try to make that change. And sometimes you'll try to make a change and you're going to fail at it. And that's okay because failure is an opportunity to learn so that next time you can make the change. Oh, I made this plan. I was going to make this change. It didn't work out. Why? I didn't have enough time. Didn't plan well. The groceries weren't at the house, whatever. Like, oh, okay, well, next time what we'll do is this so we can set ourselves up for success in our 1% better journey. And now I'm kind of rabbit trailing, but I really, really, really need you to know that every positive change you can make from a nutrition perspective starts with honesty. It starts with defining reality. It starts with shining a light on what's actually happening before you can go, okay, this is where we're at. And this is what it means to be a little better. And how we're going to get there. Honesty. Be honest. Guys, this has been Alex Van Houten in Better Daily Live. Thank you for joining me for Nutrition Tip Tuesday. I can't wait for a wild Wednesday tomorrow. But until then, it's just 1%. You got this. Joining us for your 1% better. Be you, just better, in mind, body, and spirit. Go to betterdaily.life, download our app, and check out our five star coaching resources. We all have a cross to carry. It's lighter when we do it together. Go to betterdaily.life today.